Good morning, Dr. Bob O. Oh, continuing with our Second Peters today. Today I'm going to bring Second Peter two, verse four and five. God spare not the angels that sinned. Woo. <laughs> Well, let's pray. Father, we ask your Holy Spirit to come. Holy Spirit God, come. Fill us, Lord. Give us shalom that surpasses all understanding. Touch us, O God. Whoosh. That we may be victorious today. Let us experience Revival daily, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you in advance, Father, for what you will do through us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> well, let's read. First in King James, and then I'm going to bring it at Christian Standard Bible. It's so nice that we could read from so many different versions. Uh, well, King James is the foundation, because that's the only translation that we could actually look up the Greek for. So here it goes. This is word of the Lord. For if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spare not the whole world, but save Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bring in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. This is word of the Lord. For if God didn't spare the angels who sinned, but cast them into hell and deliver them in chains of utter darkness to be kept for judgment, and if he didn't spare the ancient world, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others when he brought the flood on the world of the ungodly. God spare not the angels that sin. God spare not the humanity that sin. Wow. After this, I want you to reflect on this. This is my reflection point on page 77 of this book. If God spare not the angels that sin, what about you who is sinning today? No, I didn't write that. About human who sinned, meditate on this point and write your own personal note. And I give you ample notes so you can write. It is important that you interact with your Bible and make it personalized by writing it, responding to it, pray through it. Meditate it, think about it, ask the question throughout the day. Think about this text and ask God following question like, whoa, 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 what about, why is it down to hell, not up to hell? Is down, hell and down there or upstairs? Does the location matter to you and things like that in space or in the fourth dimension? I guess there must be down and up or is it doesn't really matter but Peter's understanding of Hades was down, so he was writing that. I mean, all kinds of implication and application question, reflective question. Process that daily. Meditate on that daily. You know, you just listen to it 15 minutes, but that's not enough, right? Regurgitate. Regurgitation means that like a cow, chew it, bring it, and to next stomach, regurgitate, bring it up back to stomach and regurgitate. Like that, reflect on it, meditate it, you know, contemplation and think about it, read it, meditate it, repeat it, say it with your words. You say it with your words and hear it with your ears and for faith comes by hearing the word of God and so you use that. Well, let's reflect on that because the word God would not spare. The spare actually means not to treat leniently. God would not be lenient to the angels who sin. Leniency is not applying. When we talk about judgment of God, don't talk about how God is love. You know, it's irrelevant to talk about love of God when we talk about judgment. God killed entire humanity except eight people. So don't try to say that, well, what's 
how does love of God apply there? Because it's both judgment and both grace, both punishment and both, you know, so it's both and. It's never either or. So get out of that trip, right? So God will not spare. He will not be going to be lenient to angels who sit. So he's talking about you false teachers and you false prophets who profit from by your teaching, who consider sheep as a giving unit, you false pastors, you false police who abuse your power and murder somebody on daylight, you false government who let systematic racism continue, on and on and on. Why would you not be judged? Right? Because God is love? Because the judgment comes and the Bible says it very clearly, you'll be cast them down to hell. Hell exists. The Bible says it, you'll be cast down. I don't know, down, up, doesn't matter. The fact is whether you go up or go down, there's a destination called hell. When I say that fact, people cringe. I said, oh, why do you say that with such passion? Do you want hell to exist? No, I don't want hell to exist. No, really, I wish that I could take John Stott's position. John Stott didn't believe there is hell. Because how can good God, loving God, create something monstrous like that? Just because we're sinners, we die and go to hell and be tortured for eternity. Uh, I don't believe that. John Stott didn't believe that. And he wrote it. That's his part of his systematic theology. It does not logically follow God is love theology. I beg to differ. That's John Stott's position. Well, truth is subjective. Pastor Bob, Bob O, what do you think? I think God exists. Why? Well, because Peter wrote it. <laughs> you know, if we believe that Bible is authoritative book and you need to honor author's intention and what he wrote, the primarily in primary interpretation is what did he say? If Peter said there is hell, and well, there is hell. For you to argue against that, then you must find some other author who said there is no hell. Right? If Paul said there is no hell, how could loving God create hell? Then okay, then we could debate. There's a debating point. But but if Peter said there is hell, and Paul said there is hell. The Bible says there is hell, and our theology should not bend that fact and say that, well, because God is love, there shouldn't be hell. Yeah, I wish there's no hell. Because, you know, I got loved ones who is continually in sin. And, and when you continually in sin, you know, that you die and go to hell. You know, I don't care if you accepted Jesus in seventh grade or college or three months ago, but you continually, willfully sin, which is next chapter, next verse, which I'm going to be talking about tomorrow, how Sodom and Gomorrah not only sin, but they willfully sin and they will continually sin. If Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't destroyed, they will be the city that represents sin city. And they will be rejoicing, they will be propagating sin. So God punish. Same thing. So if God could punish whole city, whole humanity, even angels, when they sin, God punish and send them to hell, why would we be exception? That's why Paul uses, Peter uses, he's not going to be lenient. No. You'll be sent into the chains of darkness or caves of darkness and you are going to suffer. Right? And some of the... Uh, um, Seventh-day Adventist pastors, many decades ago, maybe their position changed, but I could only speak for my personal experience. Because I was asked to come to Seventh-day Adventist young pastors retreat because they invited me primarily as a target, as, uh, as, uh, as trying to horn 
their theology, this young pastor, to attack me and then see how I stand. And so they could be confirmed that what they believe is true. And one of the arguments they had was, like, do you believe there is hell? I said, yeah. No, the first question was, do you think we should worship on Saturday or Sunday? I said, well, I worship Sunday. Said, well, the well, Bible says it's Saturday. Well, oh, that's good. Then why don't you worship Saturday? It really doesn't matter. I mean, we just as long as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, the day really doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's kind of a minor point that I really don't, you know, stand as absolute position and start criticizing and use that to fight other Christians. God is more concerned about unity, right? That's why I'm so passionate about this demonic spirit that's bringing disunity to Christian body today. So I said, yeah, good. Worship God on Saturday and just don't call others you're wrong. Just, it's just minor points. Well, what about hell? I said, well, yeah, there's hell. The well, Bible says, well, we don't believe there's hell. Well, that, that particular time, maybe it was just those pastors' point of view, but they were arguing for me, arguing against me. They said, well, we don't believe loving God will create hell. I said, well, good. <laughs> I, me too. Me too that all my loved ones and all, the, all my friends who do not know Jesus, who refuse to accept Christ, you know, I wish that they would all die and just poof, disappear. John Stott, poof, gone. Disappear, become nothing. Why not? Sounds great. Yeah, I mean, go ahead and have sex, have drug, rock and roll, sin all you want, use all the money for yourself, live selfishly, be narcissistic. <laughs> you know, let your narcissism, the other pay the price, you know, on and on and on, and die, and you just disappear. Why not? That sounds better. Sounds more logical. If love is God. But love isn't God. God is loving, but God is also just. God will justly punish the whole humanity, whole city, even angels, if you sin. So we must fight against sin. Like the Bible said, you fight with sin until you bleed because you're wrestling with sin. You're not going to commit the sin. Unfortunately, more than 60% of American men are hooked on internet porn. It's close to 70, they said, but it's, I'll say, generously, more than 60%. My goal is for you, as you listen, to commit yourself that you're going to fight that pornography addiction so that you will not engage in that today. What you did yesterday, let it pass. Don't worry about it. Today, tomorrow, it's not here yet. Today, you fight your porn addiction. Unfortunately, that 60% is no different than secular people and Christian, or even pastors, or deacons and elders. 60% of men in America are addicted to porn. Because we are, as a nation, producing 20,000 X-rated movie titles per year. I mean, right above here, Hollywood. North Hollywood, Northridge area. 20,000 X-rated movie per year perpetrating, sexualizing the whole world. It's $14 billion industry. So we're hooked. I know. You're, you're watching it. Well, at least 60% of you. I try to belong to the other the 40%. And every day I fight. I say, I'm not going to do it. Stupid, man. I'm not going to taint my body, you know, my mind, but I fight. Because if God is not lenient to sinners of the whole city, whole humanity, and even the angels, why would he be lenient to you, to me? Because I'm a pastor? Because I'm Babo? No. Let's sin. Let's fight with sin today. Amen? Let's be in the the war zone, you know, don't stay in your shire. Go to the war zone. The Lord of the Ring, <laughs> battles on. <up. laughs> Let's fight against it. Holy Spirit God, come. Holy Spirit God, only you can empower us that we can overcome and live victoriously and do not be defeated by the sin, Lord God. Help us, empower us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you tomorrow.